Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your power manifested on our behalf. Thank you because in this meeting, in this Congress, we've seen that you've been prominent here. You've been preeminent in our midst. And we know that you've started something new. This good thing you have started will continue in every life, in every family, in every local church. Will continue in this continent and beyond in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, that your blessing will always be upon your people. You have put your word in our mouth. We we'll pray that the anointing that will energize that word and make that word effective and powerful will be on every one of us in Jesus' name. That your children, your sons, daughters, servants, ministers will never lack whatever is needed to make their ministry successful in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that your hand will be upon us today as your people will be going back to the various places they have come from. The joy of the Lord will go with them. And the goodness of the Lord will never cease in their lives and ministries. You'll protect them. You'll be a wall of fire around everyone. We pray, O oh Lord, that our fellowship will continue with you and with one another. In Jesus' name, we pray. As we come to this uh, final message to round up our gathering for this year's Congress, we must lift up Jesus Christ once again because he is the head of the church. He is the Lord. He is the sovereign. He is the benefactor. And he's the one that is sending us forth. And it's not just sending us forth with a mandate. He's sending us forth as our model. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior as well as our perfect example. He died to save us, but he also lived to show us the lifestyle, the worship, the service that is most pleasing to God. He called his disciples so that he can make them able ministers of the New Testament. You know it yourself. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I want to tell you, as you know already, that it is a process that the Lord himself gets us through. And in the process of making all that he called, listen to that, all, everyone, he has called you. And the Lord is in the process of making you what you ought to be. In that process of making all the people, all the servants that he has chosen and called to be what they ought to be in the kingdom. In life and in kingdom service, there are things that he does. One, he molds. Two, he models. Three, he mentors. And four, he multiplies. One, he, as he dealt with those disciples, and as he's dealing with us, he molded them by grace. Two, he modeled godliness before them. Three, he mentored the godly. And four, he multiplied for God. And that's the process you will find as the Lord has picked you up. And the Lord begins to mold you and continues to mold you by his grace. And then it's all the time modeling godliness before you. That's why you have to keep on going back to the Gospels, going back to the life and the ministry of Jesus. What did Jesus do? In this, my circumstance and situation, what would Jesus do? Because he models for you and for me godliness. And then he mentors the godly. As we respond to his word, and we become godly by his great and in his strength. He keeps on mentoring us, counseling us, leading us, directing us, and stirring us up, and encouraging us, and doing everything that he has to do to make us the man, the woman we ought to be. The final result is he multiplies us for the glory of God. He multiplies the grace of God in us. That process has started already. 
and it will continue. And this process will continue in your life until he can see his perfect image in all ramifications, in all its implications in your life and in your ministry. And then what he does for you, you will do for other upcoming leaders. You'll mentor them. You'll model godliness before them. And by the grace of God, through your hands, their lives and ministries will be molded until they too, they are multiplied for the Lord. The mandate from the model leader. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the character and the commitment of our Messiah and model. He is our Messiah. He is our Christ. And he is our model as well. If he is our model, we need to know his character and his commitment. Number two, the command and commission from the master. He's a master. He says, you call me Lord and master. You say well, for so am I. And as the master, he has looked at us and he has given us command and commission. Number three, the consecration and conformity of his ministers. The consecration and the conformity of his ministers. Number one, the character and the commitment of our Messiah and model. As you look at the Lord Jesus Christ, a lot of things come out in John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 34. In John chapter 4 verse 34, Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That says it all. It says, My meat is to do the will of him, the will of the Father that sent me. He was always conscious of the Heavenly Father that sent him. And then he said, that's my meat. And I want to finish his work. Then he tells, the word of God tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, the character of our Messiah and our model. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them for such an high priest became us who is holy that's his character harmless undefiled separate from sinners made higher than the heavens you've seen his character the character of Jesus was well pleasing to God his commitment to God's will was without question without compromise without interruption in character he was holy we just read it righteous sinless harmless compassionate loving forgiving meek humble obedient to God in all things and at all times how about his commitment in John chapter 9 John chapter 9 looking at verses 4 and 5 I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night comes when no man can work as long as I am in the world I am the light of the world in commitment he was faithful to God he was zealous. He was self-denying. He was focused. He set his face as a flint. He was persevering. He was devoted to God's will and God's work. And he was committed to, the, to living and teaching and fulfilling God's word. He gave himself for us to provide sufficient grace so that we too can be and can live like he lived. Point number two. The command and the commission from the master. The command and the commission from the master. It tells us in John chapter, chapter 13. In John chapter 13. As uh, we read from verse 13. John 13. 
13. He called me Master and Lord. He say, well, for so I am. In verse 15, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. He said, have you seen what I've done? Yes, he washed the disciples' feet. But he wasn't limiting his command and commission to them to just that. Yes, that you will do. I've demonstrated meekness, lowliness, and humility to you. And I want you, as I am living, this is what I've left behind, that you will do as I have done. You will live as I lived. You will work as I work. You will pray as I prayed. You'll be focused as I was focused. The command of the master and a commission from the master. But you know the great commission. In Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. It tells us what the real commission, the great commission is. Chapter 16 of Mark verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the command. And that's the commission. Then he says in verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. We see what Christ has commanded. And what he has commanded, that's the essential thing. Preach the word. Evangelize. Go to the unreached and reach them with the gospel of the Lord. Preach the gospel to every creature. Virtually every creature. Cover every home. Touch every family speak to every child and preach to the growing young people and then go to the colleges go to the schools go everywhere the literates will not be neglected and the educated and highly placed will not be overlooked everyone must have a chance to hear and to respond to the word of god look at all your communities and strategize develop strategies so that you'll be obedient to the word the lord has given spend time spend life on essentials and keep non-essentials device methods develop strategies to systematically and effectively reach every creature among all categories of people and then apart from just evangelizing we're also to feed the flock it tells us in matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 I'm reading from verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Feed the flock with appropriate spiritual nourishment for strength, for growth, and for stability. Teach effectively. Teach consistently so that believers will no longer be babes tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. These are the last days and we need to teach for stability. We need to teach for steadfastness and we need to teach for usefulness. Raise up sufficient number of workers and leaders to reach and teach and lead the multitudes among neglected sections of every community. Abide in Christ. Keep the truth. Be faithful, be steadfast until the end, and you will not miss your crown in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, looking at verse 2. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commits thou 
to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also my brother that's how you multiply yourself my dear sister that's how you multiply yourself whatever good thing you can do that's great but when you impart it to other people when you pass it on to other people and you are doing it they are doing it you can multiply your ministry tenfold a hundredfold by passing it on and the more you pass it on the greater your reward will be because you are doing it you are passing it on and whatever other people are doing whatever good thing they are doing part of the uh, credit will come to you part of the reward will come to you because it was you that passed it on to them i want to encourage you for your fullness of joy and for the fullness of the blessing of god and for the great reward awaiting you don't let the message stop with you don't just be a lone ranger preaching it and doing it all alone pass it on and then in revelation chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 looking at verse 11 behold i come quickly he will soon come to give you your reward hold fast that which thou hast so that no man take thy crown nobody will take your crown point number three the consecration and conformity of his ministers the lord has called us and the lord has shown us his own model and his own example and now he's calling upon us that we will follow after his footsteps and we will commit ourselves and we will say yes lord i say yes to all your commandment and your commission upon my life here i am i am ready i am willing i am going to serve you and the grace to fulfill the promise you have made to the lord the lord will give you that grace in jesus name christ's desire and Christ's expectation is that we be wholeheartedly consecrated, committed to God, and fully conformed to Him. Such a spiritual state requires unquenchable desire, unwavering decision, uncompromising determination. As you are making up your mind, yes, we're going back. And as we're going back home, and we're going back to the various places we came from, to the place of assignment and ministry, you have, number one, you have unquenchable desire. I want to be who he wants me to be. Above all things, above any other thing, I want to be the dynamic champion of the gospel, preacher of the gospel, evangelist of the word of God, and teacher of the word of God, as he has called me to be. This is the unquenchable desire in my heart. And then there is an unwavering decision. I've made up my mind. I am focused. I am going just this one direction. And this unwavering decision is what I am holding on to. Number three, there's uncompromising determination. That my determination to be who he wants me to be. And to do what he wants me to do. There is no way I'm going to compromise it for anything and with anyone. We must reject any alternative lifestyle and voluntarily lay all things and lay ourselves on his altar for his service with the prayer of commitment we will seal our covenant to cleave unto the lord and to continue in his service until he comes you will continue i said you will continue in second timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 1 i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word you will do it i said you will do it heaven will have it on record you you are preaching the word whatever other ministers do whatever other people do you have got this mandate from the lord and you will do it the grace to do it god will give you the power to do it god will give you and the anointing to do it effectively god will give you in jesus name preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry the lord will help you 
brothers and sisters who have come to this point in this congress that with all that we have received from the lord the lord himself is challenging us and telling us and he's saying there is a work to do and you are that appointed man you are that appointed woman for this generation for that place other people serve their generation this is your own time they did it you will do it rise up and tell the lord you'll do it with all your strength with all your power with all the ability within you with all the commitment that you have you are going to do it the power of god will be with you the presence of god will go with you the lord himself will be on your side when you call upon him he will answer all the grace you need all the strength you need all the power you need everything will be given to you you will do it and do it successfully preach the word preach the word the word of salvation the word of holiness the word of the power of the holy ghost the word that heals the word that delivers the totality of the word preach the word in jesus name we pray everybody i said in jesus name we pray i believe the lord has empowered you he has energized you he has anointed you you will do god's work you will succeed in god's work the work of the lord will prosper in your name in your hand in jesus name all your needs will be supplied the needs of your family and ministry will be supplied once again we'll hear good stories about you can you just put up your hand as you are glorifying the lord and thanking the lord and knowing that the lord himself is hand is upon you you will not escape the blessing of god father in the name of jesus we thank you because of these your children your servants brothers and sisters we thank you because of what you have done in these days that we have spent together lord we're asking you that every good thing you have imparted unto them will remain with them in jesus name the knowledge the understanding the insight the anointing the power the seal the fire the passion everything you have given them will remain and abide in jesus name lord i pray that as they go back home your protection will be around them and I pray you'll keep on sharing with them, revealing to them methods, strategies by which they will be effective and fruitful in the ministry in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, you'll have clear mind, clear sight, clear vision, flowing anointing, and your power will rest upon them and upon their ministries in Jesus' name. You will be glorified in their lives. I pray, oh Lord, they'll go from strength to strength. They'll go from grace to grace. And Lord, we pray, things, good, good things that had not happened before. Spectacular things that had not happened before. Mighty things that they have not seen before. From this year in their ministry, they will begin to see them in Jesus' name. And all the burden, all the problems, all the heartaches they have left behind here, they will not pick them up again. The joy of the Lord will be their strength in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, anytime there is any kind of need or whatever it is, spiritually, materially, or in their family domestically, Lord, we're praying you'll supply their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus in Jesus' name. Be with them, Lord. Help them and say with them never to feel lonely never to feel abandoned but you know that one brother one sister with the almighty god you are in the majority the lord will never leave you the lord will never forsake you he will go with you all through the way you'll go on conquering and you'll go on succeeding and you'll go on prospering and the work of the lord will continue to succeed and prosper and increase in your life in jesus name lord i pray as your people carry this anointing carry this power and the good let them remember always we have this precious thing in an earthen vessel and to walk prayerfully and to live carefully and always to live as under the very direct presence and sight of the lord 
and Lord, should the trumpet sound before we come back together again, we will meet at the feet of Jesus. And your people will not lose their reward. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody said...